everybody, this is Wanda Alger, and I wanted to take a minute to alert you to two things to be looking for. First of all, next month, March 17 to 19, Bobby and I are going to be leading a conference called Building a Kingdom Church. And this is going to be hosted by Living Faith Chapel in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. And it's going to be free and open to the public. There's no registration and there's no cost. But we wanted to let you know about it, so if you're within driving distance, maybe you can come join us. It will be live streamed, and you can find out all the details by going to wandaalger.me, and the information is right there on the homepage. If you just click on the graphic, it will take you to their church website, and in the coming days, we'll be putting more details about the specific sessions and the topics that we're going to be covering. But this is going to be a conference where we're going to explore what it means to build a healthy church at the local level from what it means to build healthy leadership for pastors, for elders, how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, including the fivefold ministry gifts. What does that even look like? How do we build relationships with each other? We're going to be sharing some of our own journey about nurturing an atmosphere where the gifts of the Spirit are welcome, uh, a night of hosting His presence. And then on Sunday morning, I'm going to be bringing the final message, and we're going to get some freedom from religious and political spirits. So it's going to be a packed weekend, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. So again, go to wandaalger.me, and on the homepage, uh, you'll see the information there. And just look for more details to come in the coming days. Secondly, I was able to bring the morning message this past Sunday, February 26, at Crossroads. And I'm putting the link below. You can go to the Crossroads YouTube and watch the entire message. But I'm going to be putting some clips here on my channel that will kind of whet your appetite in hopes that you can go and look at the whole message. The message I brought, I titled, Being a Critical Thinker in a Culture of Critics. And I'm sharing some things that the Lord has shown me about the spirit of unbelief that is rampant in this nation and in the church. And I share some of the key principles of how to be a critical thinker, a kingdom thinker who can rightly judge and discern what's happening. I also share some about the Word and the Spirit and what the Lord is doing in the broader body of Christ. So I think you're going to want to go see the whole message. But for now, what follows is a clip, and I hope you enjoy it. So we sing this morning about have your way, do what you want to. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We fully surrendered. Come. And in my spirit, I hear the Lord saying, Will you even recognize me when I come? Will you recognize the fullness of who God is? God the Father who loves us with an unconditional love. Jesus the living word who's alive and speaks. And Holy Spirit, wild, unexpected moves of the Holy Spirit. Will we recognize the fullness of who he is and how he wants to move? Two weeks ago in worship, we were singing about giants in the land, taking down the giants. And we love that, that picture of the principalities that are over this nation in particular and taking down those giants through our prayers and our proclamations. And in the worship, I could see in my spirit the Lord giving me a bird's eye view of this nation. And on the East Coast, and I could see him looking out over the nation, the captain of the host looking above with the armies of, of heaven behind him, ready to come in and to fulfill all the cries and the intercession of the saints. And yet, as he was looking out at these giants, he was fixed on one giant in particular. And I asked, Lord, what is it? Because I knew that that giant was hindering and blocking the fullness of what God wanted to do. He said, it's unbelief. It didn't necessarily surprise me because we live in a world of unbelief. We live in a nation of many unbelievers. But yet, if you understand principalities and how they are empowered, it's because the people on the ground in that territory, they are partnering with a lie. They are agreeing with what the enemy is doing, many times not even knowing it. And so I was asking, Lord, where is this coming from? Who? Said the church. Now that's not one of the most encouraging words that I've 
received that I just want to quickly share with everybody. Because I had to ponder, Lord, what does this mean? We in the church, we can expect unbelief from the world, those who don't know Christ, those don't, who don't have the spirit of Christ within them. But, but the church, there has been a remnant for sure who has been standing and believing in faith for what God wants to do. But you have to understand a remnant can help break through the enemy lines. Just like in warfare, you have those special ops teams, that small contingency that goes ahead to break through. But what's the point? What's the purpose? It's to bring everybody else in. And so when I hear talks about the remnant, yes, a remnant has its place. And many times it's those intercessors, those watchmen who are on the front lines, who believe and who see. But yet God's whole desire and purpose is to bring everybody in. He is sanctifying his bride, the body of Christ. And we must carry his heart for the entire bride. And yet there is unbelief that is rampant within the body of Christ. We see it many different ways. Perhaps the latest and most recent is uh, the Asbury Revival, Asbury Outpouring. If you've been keeping up with what's happened on this campus in Kentucky, where Holy Spirit is moving. And if you're online, now we know everyone's an expert. What is revival? Is this revival? Is this really an outpouring? What's really happening? Well, this isn't what it is. This is what it is. All of us have our opinions, our experiences, and yet we turn into critics. Are we really building faith and belief within the body of Christ? Do we believe how God might want to come, how he might package himself? In the first century, they, they experienced the same thing. The disciples, they were looking for a Messiah, but they had totally different expectations, and they missed his coming. Every generation, it's something different. Will we recognize in this generation how he wants to come? Will we choose to believe 